Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Trader's webinar on the art and science of competing online. Through this webinar, we will be sharing best practices and insights on competing in the online marketplace based on our experience with thousands of dealers across the country. My name is Meha Barrier, and I'll be the moderator for this webinar. Before we begin, I'd like to quickly walk you through some housekeeping items. There are two ways of listening to this webinar. First, through your computer speakers, and second, dialing into the toll-free number as shown on the screen. The webinar will be a 30 to 40 minute presentation followed by a question and answer session where we will attempt to answer as many questions as time permits. Please use your chat window to post questions. To get to your chat window, click on the tab you see at the top of your screen and select the chat option. Your comments and questions will only be visible to us. Feel free to post questions in advance of the question and answer session as they come up in your mind during the presentation. Finally, if you experience any technical issues, please report them through the chat window and we will try our best to resolve the issues as quickly as possible. Your presenter for today is Roger Dunbar, Vice President of Marketing at Trader Corporation. Roger joined Trader in April of 2012 to lead the company's consumer and business-to-business -business marketing efforts along with business intelligence. Roger has worked with top global brands including J. Walter Thompson in advertising, Colgate Palmolive and the Walt Disney Company, bringing his world-class marketing experience to AutoTrader. Most recently, Roger has led award-winning digital marketing initiatives that have elevated AutoTrader's brand and pushed traffic up to 11 million visits for the first time ever in October. The depth and breadth of Roger's digital experience, however, goes way beyond his initiatives at Trader, from leading digital divisions for successful organizations like the Global Mail and Ancestry.ca. He's therefore an accomplished and recognized leader in the digital marketing space and has valuable insights to share. Now, over to Roger. Okay, thanks, Maya. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, it's really a pleasure to, to be chatting with everybody. I'm going to try to share as much of, uh, uh, of my insight as I, as I can. I'm hoping I can live up to that introduction. Um, but really what we're going to try to do is cover four topic areas in this webinar. The first is really talking about consumers today, uh, and they have been changing and, and they continue to change, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, secondly, we'll talk about standing out, standing out in that digital marketplace and how you can uh, affect advertising and marketing efforts that will help you uh, to, to reach those consumers you want to reach. Thirdly, we'll talk a little bit about a website that sells the design and look and feel of a website. And then lastly, kind of treating your leads well, how to nurture those leads and convert them into, into, uh, into buyers. So really at the end of the day, um, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is, is exactly what you do. I just happen to have a little bit more money to do it with, a little bit more scale. We'll spend about $14 million trying to drive traffic to, to Trader. And on the back end, we certainly are building our CRM efforts to engage those, those consumers and uh, continue to bring them back to our site, but also drive them to your sites as well. Um, so we'll talk in this seminar at a fairly high level. I'm going to try to get through some of the, uh, the basic information as quickly as we can because I'd like to leave some time for questions. I think those will be the areas that we can dive a little bit deeper into issues or challenges that you're having uh, specifically. And, and I think that's really, really where a lot of the great conversation uh, will take place. We've got uh, Chris uh, here from our retention team as well. He works with uh, a, a lot of dealerships on helping them to improve their performance. So when we get to the question section, you'll have two of us to ask questions uh, of, and we can certainly share with you some of our uh, insights into best practices and what we see with a lot of dealers from coast to coast. And it really is quite a mixed bag um, in terms of, of operational and, and marketing capability. We, we see a lot of very excellent uh, marketing efforts and programs, and, um, and occasionally we don't see uh, a, a great effort, and we're there to try to improve that effort. So uh, the, uh, the first thing we'd like to share with you is, is just the percentage of, of consumers who are online researching their car purchase. And that number is roughly 95%. So 95% of car shoppers go online to do their research before buying a vehicle. And today, uh, that, that, that research takes place typically over a one to three month period, although Really, it's all over the map. You may have a consumer dive into, uh, into research and then not buy a car for a year. Uh, you may have someone who buys a car the next day. So 
uh, while we say typical shopper, uh, the, the range of behavior is quite wide. Uh, clearly, they're using uh, digital devices, and, and increasingly we're seeing mobile devices in, in the mix. 50% of our traffic today comes uh, on a mobile device of some kind, either an iPad or an iPhone. So it's absolutely essential that, that you are there to see, um, to see that, uh, that consumer come to your dealership. So where are customers looking? Really, you know, a lot of customers do look at auto marketplaces and classified websites, not just ours, but others as well. Uh, roughly 56% of consumers go to a marketplace. That's for both new and used cars. It's not just used cars. Um, clearly, you know, print continues to drive a little bit of attention, but coming from, I used to work for the Globe and Mail, uh, and, uh, and tried to establish the Globe's digital strategy for a number of years. And I left the organization largely because uh, uh, print was fighting an uphill battle and we're seeing a decline in, uh, in, in usership of print. Uh, clearly, they're going to other websites to do, uh, to do research as well, uh, whether that be um, U.S.-based sites or North American-based sites. Uh, and, and just really looking to uh, all sorts of, whether it's blogs or auto review sites, uh, to try to narrow down their research. We've done a lot of research into what are the pain points for consumers. The number one pain point is price. They really don't understand what price they should be paying for a car and um, are very concerned that they get a fair price. The second uh, pain point uh, is around choice. There's just so much choice in the marketplace today that, that really providing them with some tools to compare vehicles uh, is absolutely essential when they do their research. It's just overwhelming for them. Um, so, you know, really in conclusion, uh, and we can come back to this if you have specific questions, uh, consumers are smarter, and I'm sure you all know that. They're better informed when they walk into the dealership. Oftentimes they have uh, the car that, that they would like to purchase well in mind, uh, and most of their research is done before they get to the, uh, to the dealership. Um, really, digital marketing has redefined what it means to sell a car it's gotten more difficult. It's just harder uh, and harder work, more difficult for you guys to figure out how uh, to sell a car. There's just more work involved and it's something that we all have to accept or not. But I've certainly over the last decade or so, I think made every mistake possible uh, when it comes to digital marketing uh, and, and have learned you know, a number of things and, and you just really need to jump in and experiment and, and try to figure out as much as you can. Uh, but that's why we're also here today to, to try to help you avoid some mistakes as well. Uh, so let's move on to the next section, and that's really what we're going to call standing out, standing out in the digital bazaar. The first thing you want to make sure is that you're, you're being as competitive in the digital space as, as you would for your bricks and mortar store. So make sure you're, you know, you're shopping for your own car and auto. When you shop for your own car and auto, try your .ca and the mobile app, see what comes up. Take a look at, at how your, your merchandise is being, um, is being viewed. Look at the description. Look at the, the image and, and the pictures. Uh, make sure it's as attractive as it possibly can be. Uh, in terms of placement, you know, what page is my listing appearing on? Where is my listing on the page? Is it the top, the middle, or the bottom? Does my listing stand out? That's where really the, the battle is, is won and lost. And you have to look at it, not just from the perspective of your own dealership, but look at it more objectively from a competitive lens and, and really make a, a, an objective assessment of whether or not your cars are standing out as best they can. But there's nothing that beats going online and, and, and seeing actually how you appear, uh, both on your own website and in different marketplaces. Uh, if we move on to uh, pricing, um, it's really important that, that you know, the pricing makes sense. And we do, I'm not here to sell you anything, but we do uh, have the Velocity, a, a product called Velocity, that does assess the, uh, at any given time, the supply and demand uh, in the marketplace for a particular make and model. And basically consumers will understand this based on their research. So you, you really do have to have a good sense of what the right price point for your product is. And, and does it make sense in terms of, of the actual product that you have? So you have to look at your kilometer reading. You have to look at sort of the type and condition of the vehicle and be objective about it. We all sort of fall in love with what we're selling, our products, um, and, and that will get you into trouble. You really do have to, to treat this merchandise as objectively uh, as you possibly can. And, and the goal is to turn this over as quickly as you can. And 
you know, the best thing you can do is just be competitive on price. That is the one, as I said earlier, the one thing that consumers are really uh, conscious about and, and do most of their research around. Uh, so compare your pricing to your competitors. They will help determine how much interest you know, your listing will generate. Uh, we've had a lot of dealers think about using zero dollar pricing. Based on our research, it does not work as a strategy. It lowers the interest of the consumer uh, who has done his or her research. It drives customers to other listings that have pricing close to what they are looking for. It lowers your credibility really as a trustworthy dealer that knows the market and prices of cars accordingly. Uh, they, you know, it really does damage um, uh, your reputation. And, and doesn't do you any favors in the long run. You may feel like you're, uh, as a strategy that that works in the short term, but it, w it really doesn't work in the long term. We've got the data, we've, we've, we've assessed it for all dealers using different pricing strategies. Um, So just want to check in at this point and make sure that uh, everybody is uh, on the right slide. All right, um, we'll just continue. Um, so really when you're looking at pricing, you generally never want to be the highest price clearly on the landing page. Um, you know, really in, in, uh, in a number of examples we've seen, uh, you know, when the kilometer reading is double compared to others on the page and the price is six to $8,000 higher, uh, clearly, you know, you're, you're gonna have difficulties and challenges. So you really wanna spend some time um, to make sure that price is as competitive as possible. Your turns will be much higher. Uh, we've got a fair amount of data that we could share with you around how much faster those turns are uh, when you're pricing it at either market value or close to market value, uh, say within two or three percent. There may even be a sweet spot where you're pricing it four or five percent below market value that will, will drive the optimal number of turns and in the long run, you'll generate much more profitability, much, much better return on your investment uh, if you're driving those turns as opposed to trying to squeeze every dollar out of, uh, out of the inventory that you've got. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about engaging with, uh, with rich media. Um, really today, rich media is just, you know, is, is a must in the online world. Um, more customers than ever expect their online experience to be engaging. They expect it to be visual and they expect it to be impactful. And the use of rich media like photos and videos is really the right way to go. I've, I've seen some really outstanding uses of video, um, really personal engaging video where individual salespeople uh, are, are utilizing the video to not only introduce themselves in the vehicle, but build a rapport with the audience. And I think spending that time is, is, is very valuable. But at, at the very minimum, you want to make sure that the photos uh, are working for you. Ideally, you'd want 10 to 14 photos per listing. Uh, in terms of quality, you really want to be meticulous about the background of the photo. You should, where you can, ensure that it's branded with the dealership in the background. Uh, you want the lighting and the shadows, the sharpness, the photo angle all to be right. You want to experiment a little bit and make sure that, that uh, it's right. The, the difference in, in sales uh, can be a factor of two to three, four, or even five times greater for vehicles that, that have the right images, the right photos because that's what, uh, that's what they're looking for. And it's very true, not only in auto sales, but in real estate and in a number of other uh, online classified categories. The image, images are very important. They're not gonna come into the dealership unless they have a reason to come in. For interior photos, obviously, you know, some basics, you wanna make sure it's clean, uh, that you've reconditioned the interior, that uh, there are no, you know, people or pets in the, in the background. It sounds obvious, but, but we've seen some of that stuff in the past. Um, ensure you capture the full details, you know, uh, the full back seat in the image, for example. Uh, include the engine bay, the truck, the dashboard, the front seat, the rear seat, and, and where you can just create a standard 
we certainly try to do the same when we're the uh, capture, we provide the capture service to dealers in terms of images, but you want to have a standard that you follow that it just becomes uh, very methodical in terms of how you take the images. Uh, so, um, I'm sure we've all seen examples of, of sort of good photos, uh, the beauty shots that, that work very well where the image is, is crisp and clear, uh, the car just looks perfect uh, as opposed to, you know, taking from the wrong angle, taking the wrong time of day, having too many shadows, uh, and, and the car just looking, you know, not as good as I said before. The difference in terms of uh, success can be a factor of two, three, four, or five times. Uh, another area we want to talk about is sort of effective ad copy. Um, an analogy to this would be writing a, a subject line for an email. Again, we've seen a factor of anywhere from 2 to 20 to 50 times difference in, in uh, email subject lines that are crisply and clearly written versus something that is unclear. So you want to make sure the ad copy is, is as good as it, as it could possibly be. Never leave this section blank. Uh, on AutoTrader, you have 22 characters uh, in the search results page to impress your prospective buyer. So ensure the description is more about the vehicle and less about the dealership. Uh, they'll get to the dealership part, but you've got to sell the car first. Um, so things like you know, family owned or owned by the little old lady from Pasadena uh, with little mileage uh, would, be, uh, would be great. So give some sense of, of description and who owned it. Call out items like navigation, rear view camera, sunroof, items that car buyers are really interested in or looking for. Call out things like warranty, leasing options, financing rate. Uh, all these things can dramatically improve click-throughs. And finally, you should mention attributes like clean or single owner, non-smoker, original paint, no claims or accents, etc. So same thing, you know, um, uh, if you've ever been on eBay and tried to sell anything, uh, you learn quickly uh, how important the ad copy is. So we have some examples of poor descriptions uh, on this page. Um, you know, A, it's tough to read, but B, um, they're just not very clear. Uh, so certified and e-tested is really not a selling point for a client paying this type of money for a vehicle. 2995 in the bottom example. Uh, listing with no description is definitely a miss in the top example. The next page has a good description. You know, the dealer has called out the premium package, moonroof, Bluetooth, heated seats. I mean, who doesn't want to own this car when it's very clear and crisp what it is? So take, I mean, it, it all comes down to time and taking the time to do these things right. But once you get uh, into the groove of, of writing description this, in this way, taking photos in this way, making sure that the price is what it needs to be, then you're into a rhythm that you can repeat over and over again. But the difference will be uh, incredibly significant. So moving on to section three, uh, I want to talk a little bit about a website that sells. So um, really, this is where I think I've, I've seen um, great examples and just the absolute worst examples imaginable. And the, the one thing I think that causes most dealers or small business people or you know, even large companies to make a mistake is just trying to, to, to cram too much information on to each page and certainly the home page. Um, it just less is, is more. So it's an opportunity. This is your opportunity to create a first best impression and really demonstrate the kind of business you are to prospective buyers. So in this example, um, it's, it's a, clearly a dog's breakfast. You don't know where the eye should focus. Uh, it's no different than a retail store. I mean, in your dealership, uh, on the floor, you would make sure that the cars have enough room to walk around, that they're presented well. You wouldn't try to cram too many cars in uh, and make it crowded. It's the, same, it's the same philosophy on a website. You can put too much on it. So appearance is absolutely key. And while this, ex you know, this example is a bit of an exaggeration, I have seen lots of sites that aren't far from, and Chris is nodding, I have, uh, we've both seen lots of sites that aren't far from this. So keep it clean, uh, up-to-date, and user-friendly. I want to talk a little bit about the importance of branding. So I've spent a lot of time with uh, Walt Disney Company, as, as Maya said, uh, with Colgate, working with uh, J. Walter Thompson with a number of different clients. And branding is, it, it is, you know, it's very subjective, but it's incredibly important. And the goal is really to think about what your dealership stands for, what sets you apart, what's important uh, to your consumer. So clearly, you know, things like being a part of your community, 
uh, being integrated in your community uh, are important. But also, you know, you want to make sure that, that you come across as being trustworthy, that, um, that the whole sense is a positive, warm uh, experience, that your, your brand is positive and warm, and that at the end of the day, you know, you're inviting to those consumers. So how do you, how do you achieve that? It's attention to detail. Brand is everything. It's the font that you use. It's the colors that you use. It's the images that you use. You really do need to be uh, as objective as you possibly can. Uh, and again, oftentimes less is more. Don't try to say you're too many things. Try to say you're one or two things that are important to your consumer. So uh, a small thing uh, that isn't so small is, is kind of keeping your images up to date. Uh, nothing worse than, than having something that looks dated. Um, that uh, you know, you have old promotions hanging around. It's it just reflects reflects badly on your brand. Uh, it's all about attention to detail. All of these things are about attention to detail. And while it it's hard work, uh, it pays back. So are the photos of your inventory uh, of the most current season? Is the quality and sharpness, the aspect ratio of your images, are they right? Uh, the quicker you can get your images uploaded, the quicker you'll move your vehicle. So timeliness and attention to detail are everything. Um, clearly, if you've won awards or have accreditations, that's something that you, you know, third-party accreditations or awards, you want to make sure that that is, is well-featured. You don't want it to, again, be a dog's breakfast. Pick out the most important ones and highlight them on your, on your site. It just gives consumers clearly a sense of trust and respect for your dealership. Uh, and as we all know, sort of that, if you can, if you've been involved in the community, make sure that uh, your community is aware of that. It's a, it's a great way to sort of connect with your community and make them feel like you're around and, and will be around uh, for a long time in the future. So talk a little bit about website key performance indicators, and you can really, you know, you can go as deeply as you want into understanding how your website is performing. But it is important to look at those KPIs on a regular basis. Uh, so clearly you want to look at traffic and not just the number of visits, but uniques as well. You want to know how many unique visitors you're getting. Clearly, if your unique visitors are growing, then that means your reach into your community is expanding. If, if they're not growing or declining, your visits may, total visits may still be up, but you're not kind of growing your reach into your community. So you really want to understand um, how you're performing relative to both reach and the frequency of people coming back to your site, which is, is really a measure of visits. So you want to, you know, and you want to be clear about where that traffic is coming from uh, as best you can, that, that sense of what we call attribution. Um, that, it, you know, it's incredibly important to know what is driving your traffic. Is it, is it uh, your paid search activity? Is it a radio campaign? Is it a television campaign? Is it print? To the extent that you can, you need to understand where that traffic is coming from. Um, if your website isn't performing, then... That's when you go back and you look at elements that we've talked about, uh, the inventory mix, pricing, um, the branding that you've done, the images, the, 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 the marketing effort. It could be any one of those things and soft through a process of elimination that you'll find out what's working and what's not working. Um, if you're unsure of how to improve your marketing, there's some things you can look into. Uh, clearly, you know, understanding SEO, uh, search engine um, uh, Basics organic search is is clearly important. There are two elements to to driving your SEO. One is technical, the structure of your, your of your URL structure and and sort of technical details around how the pages are constructed is very important. The other is content. So content can help drive uh, your SEO rankings. What do I mean by content? You could have something you know how to how to wash your car, um, you know uh, how to how to replace a tire. Those kinds of pages can help you drive uh, better SEO. It may not drive a lot of traffic, but collectively, if you have a lot of that content, it can help you uh, drive your rankings. Uh, it's it's sort of the long tail concept. So it's, each page is going to drive a little bit of traffic, but all that little bit of traffic will add up to something. Clearly, you want to look at paid search. You want to look at how you're ranking from a competitive standpoint in your local market. Uh, there should be a structure to your paid search uh, activity uh, in terms of, of sort of local terms, uh, make, model, all of those things. So you should have a, a strategy around paid search we can talk about in questions if, if you are not quite sure how to approach that. Um, but it's certainly uh, necessary to, to educate yourself. Um, ensuring your logo on the marketplace listing links 
uh, sorry, ensuring your logo on your marketplace listing links to your dealership website is critical. Uh, is your content on your website uh, engaging enough? The descriptions, the promotions, the images, the video content. Is your traffic, uh, if your traffic is decent but lead conversion is poor, clearly take a closer look at your call to actions, meaning your pricing uh, and promotions. And what's really important, if you're wondering sort of what a good benchmark is for traffic, click-throughs, et cetera, you know, you can always talk to your trader account manager. I'm a marketing guy, so I'm not going to do a lot of selling in this, in this webinar, but that account manager is provided with reports that can benchmark uh, your dealership against other dealerships um, on traffic and, uh, and other KPIs and give you a sense of how you're performing in your area. Uh, both within your local area uh, on a regional basis and even on a national basis. So you can you can get a sense of, of how well you're doing. Last but not least, the fourth section, we're going to talk about treating leads well. So you've, you've worked hard to build the right experience. You've worked hard to put the marketing plan together. You're driving traffic to your website. The traffic's coming into the store or, or emailing or calling you. You want to make sure you're, you're converting as much of that, that attention as possible. So email lead management is absolutely critical. It's the one, one of the areas that we see is, is generally handled poorly across a lot of dealerships, surprisingly. Um, so you know, how, how should you handle your email leads? Some best practices uh, to remember you know, are the basics. Answer promptly. People expect a call back often within an hour, but certainly within a few hours. Call the customer if they have included their phone number in the email. Obviously, uh, call them immediately. Try to build that rapport. Uh, if not, then we recommend you reach out to them three to five times before giving up. An email lead is a warm lead, clearly, so treat it as you would a walk-in customer. Include a blurb on your dealership uh, in your response to demonstrate why they should pick your dealership. Try to draw their attention with relevant information that they might be looking for. Try and get them to respond by asking meaningful questions. Uh, be engaging and sincere, clearly in your email communication. Don't be just short and sharp. Um, address every comment, concern, or questions. People are looking for responses to their specific, uh, their specific uh, questions that they've included in the email. They expect those answers. Talk about next steps and be proactive in scheduling them. So, you know, always be closing, obviously, uh, and trying to get them to come in to see you. Don't jump to that. Ask the questions first and then close with that. Always provide a client with an option. If a client asks for a specific vehicle that you don't have in stock, then you know, provide alternatives. I know a lot of these are basics, but they're not always observed. Um, talking about phone leads for a second, uh, you want to make the most of your phone leads. These are, these are the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross leads. People have, have taken the trouble of, of picking up the phone and engaging with you. Clearly, they're extremely interested, even more so than from an email standpoint. So implement QA programs to ensure the leads are being handled appropriately. Ensure your reps are drawing people in, even when they don't necessarily have the exact inventory the person is looking for, and then ensure the sales rep is making a personal connection uh, with the caller. Um, so phone manners are, are important. And then uh, customer at your doorstep. So when they walk in, and about 60% uh, of the traffic that a listing on AutoTrader would generate is actually walk-in traffic. So about 20% are phone, mail, uh, phone uh, about 20% are email, 60% just walk in to your dealership because they feel like you've got the car that they want. So always ask where the customer saw your listing. It helps you figure out the attribution. Uh, obviously, you've got to record it and, and keep track of it, but it's important for you to understand to continue to refine and improve your marketing efforts where that lead came from. Uh, it can make a, a huge difference ultimately in the, in the performance of your marketing campaign. You can double or triple the, the number of leads that you generate and ultimately the conversion that you get out of your marketing efforts. So understand, as we said before, customers are savvier today. They've already done a lot of research online, so you don't necessarily have to start at the beginning. You know, make sure the information that you're providing them are value added. Uh, so really ask questions about how much they know and don't know about the car. Get to the stuff that they really want to understand when they're there. And then ensure your sales reps are using best practices on the floor. You all know what those, what those are. Um, but, uh, you know, they're there to satisfy that customer. They've walked into your dealership. And in this day and age, that's a huge step towards, you know, uh, uh, they've you know, done their research, a huge step towards wanting to make a purchase. You don't want to lose them. And then lastly, you know, before we move on to questions, um, as I said before and said throughout this, this discussion, 
you know, digital marketing is, is hard work. I started in, in the marketing world 20 years ago, and I can tell you it was a whole hell of a lot easier. I didn't spend half the time I do today uh, on trying to make sure these things are right. It's just the nature of digital marketing. There's, there's more media. Um, there's, there's better uh, uh, research consumers. And it just is the nature of the beast. It's harder to compete these days than it used to be. So really, you kind of got to acknowledge that and embrace that fact. Um, you need to, to use tools like SEO, LSO. You need to understand website design. Uh, if, if you don't understand it, then either buy the expertise or you know, partner with folks like us who, can, you know, who, who definitely want to help you understand what it takes uh, to, to compete today effectively. It means having the discipline to maintain all these elements on a regular basis, which is not easy. I've got the benefit of five or six agencies, some in the U.S., some in Canada, uh, that I pay to help me do this. I know you don't have those resources, but you've got to find ways to, to you know, bring yourself up to speed as much as possible. And it means staying on top of technology changes, which is incredibly difficult. Google's changing almost every, every week their algorithm and how uh, paid search works and how organic search works, so it, it is difficult. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still, you know, digital marketing is all about mind share. That part hasn't changed in terms of marketing. Uh, it's essential, you know, to get your initiatives um, around your customer in place, uh, to keep your dealership top of mind. And to the extent that we can, we're here to help. Um, I'm more than happy to, you know, after the question period to answer any questions by email or phone. Uh, we'll give you our contact information. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's very difficult to sort of share everything within 40 minutes or 30 minutes. Uh, but we wanted to cover the basics, and we're now ready to move on to questions. So thank you for, for your attention. Hope the presentation gave you a few tidbits here and there. Uh, but maybe questions uh, we can help you with uh, and get more specific. Thank you, Roger. Um, as a reminder, uh, please use your chat window to post any questions you might have. Um, we do have a few questions uh, from the audience, Roger. So one of the first questions that has been asked is, in terms of uh, trend, you know, the past year, what, you, what you've been seeing in the digital marketing world, um, what are some of the things that we need to keep top of mind um, and really invest our, our time and energy after? Um. I would say uh, number one is, is in terms of change is, is mobile. Uh, about a year and a half ago, 18 months ago, when I, I started with Trader, our percentage of traffic coming from mobile devices was about 3%. It's now 50%. So that's a, 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 an incredible shift and in change over the last 18 months. I think iPads and iPhones and, and, and the improvement of smart technology has, has made it uh, a much more attractive option. But clearly people are on their phones. Uh, half our traffic is coming from from mobile, uh, not quite half of our leads, uh, but it's growing. So people are prepared to carry their devices around with them. They want to see the inventory, uh, and they and they're and they're mobile. They want to you know use that to show up at the dealership. So that's one. The second one would be, in my mind, uh, attribution. Really understanding where your traffic and, and leads is coming from. If you don't know that, then you can't ref you can't continue to refine your marketing efforts. And, and it's about continuous improvement. Um, so we, when we started, our cost per acquisition, uh, let's call it, you know, was about ten dollars per lead um, in general. Uh, and we've managed to to reduce that considerably just through being smarter about where we spend our money and market uh, our our website. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Um, another question we have um, is, what is your opinion of Facebook advertising? Um, generally speaking, I, I've tried it a number of times. I haven't found it all that effective. Uh, I think social media in general is not all that effective as a marketing tool. Um, it is one place where if people are talking about you, you want to be able to respond. You don't want that conversation to continue without you uh, dealing with it. You should deal with it up front uh, and honestly. So if somebody says, you know, your dealership is, is, is a shitty place, then you want to make sure that, uh, that you're addressing it publicly and saying, look, you know, we're sorry you had a bad experience. Uh, maybe you can tell us more about it, uh, and we'd love to correct it. Uh, and that's true of hotels or, or restaurants or dealerships or whatever. Um, but from an advertising standpoint, it's been largely ineffective on a, on a scaled basis. Uh, but in a local community, it might help to run the odd promotion and, and see what impact you get. But it's, it would be the last thing I would focus on. Okay. Thanks. 
Um, what is the next step we could take in training? And I'm assuming it's more about digital marketing training. What's the best way to learn more uh, about some of the, the key uh, concepts? Uh, great question. I think, you know, there's different ways. We're actually putting together a dealer education program and we're, we're calling it sort of a non-branded dealer education program, meaning that we're not there to sell, we're not there to promote, we're there to educate and help people. So we'll be launching that um, in, uh, and Mayor, you're helping us, but we'll be launching that uh, in, in the first quarter of next year. So we would love to see people come out and participate in that. And again, it's, it's a sales, largely a sales-free zone, so a great way to learn. Uh, and not be pressured into buying anything. Um, you can certainly uh, join marketing uh, associations uh, like uh, the IAB or other marketing groups online and, and learn from them. They, they have a lot of education programs as well. Uh, the associations, uh, industry associations like TADA, uh, we're working with a number of them, but they'll be expanding their education efforts. And then we've got, and maybe Chris can jump in, but we've got uh, uh, specialists inside our business that if you're a customer, uh, you can access and tap into. Chris, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think our account directors are always going to be a great resource when it comes to digital marketing, and uh, <clears throat> they're constantly looking to expand their knowledge. But uh, my team, we're known as the performance team here at Trader. What we've specialized in doing is essentially uh, optimizing clients' performance um, in order to ultimately generate the most amount of leads possible within their solution. Um, I, working with a team like ours, what we really do is we'd sit down with uh, any individual client, analyze everything as thoroughly as possible, and I think one of the things we've been talking about is all the core components that roll up together to make a good solution, and what we really do is dive into everything very deeply analytically and to essentially try to bridge the gap between how a client understands their solution, what is working, what isn't working, and give them a little bit of direction on how you know bridging that gap and collectively unifying the solution um, is ultimately going to go ahead and, like I said, generate more leads for you. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. We do have another question, Chris, that you might be able to, um, to answer. Sure. Is there a way to have our logo superimposed on each of our vehicle pictures? There is. That is a very manual way of doing it. So it's not a trader solution per se. Um, literally what we've done with a lot of our clients is we get a branded banner from them. Um, normally within the banner what we would include is a phone number. Um, of course uh, a picture of usually the uh, owner of the dealership. And uh, essentially be it within paint or whatever um, I guess uh, application you would want to use. It's literally overlaying it on top of your image. Now, one of the things you want to make sure um, that works is that there's enough spacing on either the top, the bottom, or the side of your image to actually superimpose a banner while um, ensuring that you have a full view of your vehicle as well. Um, it definitely helps within the trader market space. So, you know, if you're going on autotrader.ca or any marketplace in general, the first thing a client's going to look at is normally the description of the vehicle up top, uh, be it the trim. Um, the second thing they'll notice is the vehicle description right below, which is 22 characters. And in line with that, they're also going to be looking at your image. So anything that you can do to brand your image or make it pop out is going to be better. And keep in mind, you are competing, and, and that's the key word within a marketplace. So you want to make sure you stand out. Excellent. Um, we have a question around um, local search optimization. Um, what is the value of layering in um, local search optimization and SCM together within a digital marketing strategy? I think I can speak to that one. Um, there's a couple of clients that I've worked with who did have local search engine optimization. Um, I'm going to call out one in particular, I won't mention the name, but they were trending at about 60 leads per month. Most were coming from their marketplace, not very much from their uh, website solution. So when we started working with them, uh, the client was really, really uh, determined to compete and be successful. They looked at their pricing model. They looked at everything that uh, a core business would want to look at on their end. And what we really did was attempt to ramp up their digital marketing. So we looked at their website. We changed um, essentially their template. We changed um, essentially their branding strategy as well. And then we talk about LSO. So what does it do? Um, Part of generating leads from LSO is essentially taking over a Google Places account or creating a Google Places account. Um, by taking over that type of an account, what we were able to do is their Google Places listing. So let's say you're doing a search online. Um, one of the things that most clients are going to want to know is where you're located. Um, for example, clicking on that Google Places listing and directing it directly to your website is going to incrementally increase the traffic that's coming to your website. It may not mean that you're going to get a lead, but it's highly likely that you're going to get a visit or you're going to be called out 
when you are searched, uh, be it by vehicle type, be it by um, location, be it by your actual name or your branded name as well. So really what it does, it adds another layer over on top of an optimized solution to generate additional traffic to your site. Excellent. Um, we have, our next question is around Twitter. What are some of the best practices for Twitter to increase customer leads? Uh, well, I think there's there's probably two elements to that. One would be content, um, and the first thing is to be consistent. So you want to be tweeting on a regular basis, otherwise people will forget about you. Um, and and make sure the the content is you know uh, short, sharp, and and relevant. It could you know, and and you want to speak in the tone of sort of the Twitter verse, meaning uh, you know decent sense of humor and those kinds of things. But but make it useful. Don't make it. It's it, you're not there to sell on Twitter. You're not there to to, to brand on Twitter. You're there to sort of engage people in a conversation. So make it relevant, make it interesting, uh, and keep it consistent. And then the other part is, is, is how do you promote that? And, and you can promote it through all of your other platforms. You know, follow us on Twitter. Make sure you're giving people uh, some awareness that, that you are uh, on that platform. Uh, so you want to make sure that the person who is tweeting uh, on behalf of your dealership um, is... Uh, uh, is uh, has a personality and is engaging and is and is fun and and uh, knows how to uh, how to how to sort of talk in that language and and is building a personality and a brand. Okay, I think we have uh, time for one last question. Um, is there an optimal product mix or dollar value that you recommend um, in, um, in in building a successful digital marketing strategy? Um, well, we can answer that probably in a couple of ways, and Chris can, can chime in too. I think there are some basics that you need to take care of first. The, the first one is organic search. You want to make sure your SEO practices are right, uh, that the technical aspects are right in terms of how you structure uh, your, your site. Um, and then uh, you want to build that content that I, I talked about. That's, that's sort of a great investment. Um, the second is you, you need to be competitive from a paid search standpoint. It's aggravating, I know, to have to give Google lots of your money, but uh, if you're not doing it, someone else is grabbing those leads uh, of people who are fairly you know, well down the funnel in terms of searching for specific makes models in a location. You, you have to be there. The next piece I'd layer on if I had money, if I had another dollar to spend, is, is uh, from a digital campaign standpoint, so branding and, and uh um, and banners and, and trying to, you know, think about where to do your digital advertising. Uh, it would be great if you could afford radio and TV, but lots of places can't. Um, I spend, we spend 60% of our, our budget on television. We believe in television. It's a high reach medium. Um, if you really want to drive, uh, a lot of uh, business, uh, advertising on TV, I think works and, and radio works. I quite frankly wouldn't be in print because, uh, coming from the globe, I know, the inside numbers on, on response rates to print ads. I know what the cost per thousands are, and it's just outrageous. Uh, I wouldn't spend a nickel in print. Um, and, uh, and beyond that, um, you know, it, it's obviously there's PR, there's social media, and other things that you can dabble in, but generally those are below the line ty types of uh, uh, promotions that aren't going to help you. Um, those are the areas that I would, I would market first. As I said, you know, a lot of our leads just are generated through walk-ins. So when you're thinking about marketplace type uh, places to advertise, you know, consider that a lot of those leads will come in uh, through the door. They won't come in email and phone. You may never know why they came in. Um, but our, our understanding, this is universal across the globe, that uh, it does drive a lot of uh, walk-in traffic. So I'll go back to attribution, just making sure that you understand where the traffic is coming from. And when you get that feedback loop happening, you can continue to refine your, your marketing spend. It just gets better and better and better. So Chris, do you have anything you did? Yeah, I think, you know, Roger covered off most of the points. I don't think there's a specific number in terms of spend. Most of the clients that I've worked with, um, I would say they typically range in between somewhere 200 to, let's say, $1,500 a week. Um, but I would suggest that in some cases, people that are spending less are generating more, and in some cases, vice versa. 
Um, I would say the key for me is really making sure that you have all the best basic practices down and you build a, sol a solid foundation to build on top of. You know, then you can start layering other products like Rogers talked about, you know, LSO, SEM. Um, you know, realistically, if you're not doing the small things right, then layering on additional product and spending more money, you're not going to get as much bang for your buck as you can. So um, I would say get good at what it is you have so far and then work with your account managers or, you know, whatever medium that you choose to go with in order to layer on additional product. And another key is making sure that you're tracking performance and understanding the value that the product uh, brings to the table. Um, bottom line, if a product isn't performing, don't hesitate to call it out, cut it off, and try something different. That's really what digital marketing is about. So I did have a follow-up question saying uh, from Mark, saying, did you say you wouldn't spend a dime on print ads? <clears throat> I, I, I did say, I, I wouldn't certainly, we don't spend any money on print, uh, and we spend about $14 million a year at Trader on marketing, trying to drive people to our, our marketplace um, and, and mobile platforms, and we don't spend a dollar on, on print. I, where I would spend money on print, if, 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 you, if you would like to, is in your local sort of community newspaper uh, where the page rates or line rates are, you know, usually less than a dollar. Uh, it's reasonably effective, uh, particularly because it's local. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that would be okay. Um, but, you know, spending a lot of money uh, elsewhere, uh, there are better places, believe it or not, to, to spend your money and get a, a better, more efficient um, uh, response to your dollar spent. Uh, so the ROI will be better elsewhere unless you manage to negotiate something, um, you know, incredibly effective, but you're down in the dollar uh, align uh, rate. I'm in line with Roger on this one, and one other thing I'll add, uh, one of my favorite things that some clients are using a little bit more now is custom video. Um, bottom line, if you have a nice dealership, it's set up and you have a great presence, um, let's say, you know, an owner that has a lot of personality and charisma, uh, bottom line, you want to go ahead and make a video and capture your dealership, capture the presence, because what it's going to do, um, you know, we're talking about the millennial generation. They're sitting down on their iPads, they're sitting down on their mobile technology, like Roger said, it's only increasing, and people really don't want to go ahead and read a blurb, and bottom line, it doesn't really present itself all that well on a mobile device. Um, but having a video um, and playing it back, and once again, seeing that dealership, seeing a, a person, a character, so to speak, um, selling a car, it's going to make you feel good and it's going to uh, trigger a lot more playback and highly likely to go ahead and get somebody to give you a call just because they like what it is that you put on. It's entertainment, so to speak, and that's what uh, the new generation is looking for. Yeah, I've seen some really effective um, videos uh, of enga very engaging salespeople yeah. uh, walk through a description of the car, right. um, and it's, uh, you know, obviously not everyone's made for video. <laughs> Uh, including us because we're we're doing this audio, but, um, but if you have somebody who's very personable and and uh, and somewhat entertaining, it's it's incredibly effective, and it just it just creates a, an engagement that you can't create otherwise. Excellent. I think uh, that was great because it answers Nima's question around uh, inventory videos. Mm, yeah. Um, so I think uh, we're almost out of time now, but thank you very much uh, for your participation. Uh, we have been recording uh, this particular webinar, so we'll be sending you out a copy of the webinar uploaded to our new YouTube channel um, later in this week. We do have a short survey at the end of uh, the WebEx session, so if you don't mind sparing a couple minutes just quickly filling it out and um, sharing your thoughts on how, um, how you liked this webinar and areas of improvement, that would be much appreciated. Um, thank you once again, everyone, for your participation. We hope you have a great day, and we look forward to speaking to you soon again.